Welcome back to Nick Lynch's Comic Corner Classic Slash Non Classic. This is episode 505 and double shot number, I want to get this correct, 416. Okay? Two DC trades. First up is a trade from DC Rebirth Nightwing Volume 3, Nightwing Bust Must Die. This contains Nightwing Volume 4, issues 16 through 21. Yep, with Tim Seeley in the writing. And Javier Pereira's on the artwork. Oh, and also, this is one of the characters from this particular story called Deathwing. And he's wearing Nightwing's new 52 costume, which I'm kind of like, um, where the heck did he get that thing from? Yeah, it's a little bizarre, though. Um, this particular storyline, I mean, for the, basically for the first five issues, this thing is six issues in here. Uh, the stand, the last issue is just a, a standalone issue. Not even written by Tim Seeley, it's written by somebody else. This one's written by... Uh, Michael McCann, of course, the other artists in here are Maku Chang and Christian Deuce. Yeah, that's literally the guy's name. Javier Ferreira is the, and uh, Chris Samar basically was the colorist of this thing. Um, he does the, they do the cover art. Uh, there, this particular storyline, uh, the, the, I'll talk about the one shot first. Um, the last issue in here is just uh, a one shot issue with just. Uh, Nightwing and Flash stopping a guy called Time Stopper. Having night in town, Bloodhaven. That's really what the last issue is. But let's talk about Nightwing Must Die. It's five-parter. This story, in a nutshell, is a love letter to Grant Morrison's run from Batman and Robin. That's essentially put what this five-parter is. Because Damien's in here. You also have, Sim you have Dr. Simon Herr, Professor Pig. Um... Yeah, they, they appear in here. Like, Simon Hurt, I was so surprised to see this guy. To see him in in, in, in a Batman book again. This is actually his first post flash my appearance. Because the last time I saw this guy was in Grant Morrison's last issue for Batman and Robin. Of course, that issue came out roughly back in 2010. So, I think these issues came out, I think it was just recently this came out. Yeah, just this year. So, it had been seven years since he had the last appearance. Yep. Plus, also, we also have something that we haven't seen since Batman and Robin. Uh, the Batmobile. Yep. Uh, basically, the, the, shoot, uh, the Batmobile that uh, they, they got during their run basically appears in here. Yep. The Flying Batmobile. Which I think they must have borrowed that from, from uh, Batman Beyond, which is funny, the fact they borrowed it from that. Uh, I wanted to show up this particular page because this shows off like four Robins from four different timelines. Yeah, um, four different decorations. The one on the let, let's take a look at let's take a look at these guys. Uh, this one right here, this is from Thrill Kill. I recognize the outfit. The one here that is actually Deathwing from the Free Flashpoint universe. He's from an alternate timeline. Uh, as for the last two. I think this is this is a, a version of Robin from Zero Hour. Maybe I don't know, but the other two Robins, I don't know who the heck they are, or at least what what timeline they're from. Yep. But it's great the fact they actually threw this in here, and plus also the first time people have seen Fester Pig. You know, the last Fester Pig showed up was during Robin War. Yeah, in the it was actually just before Robin War happened. Uh, yeah, it was actually during Robin War. It was. Actually, at this point, it had been about almost two years since he last appeared. Uh, it was during the teen, couple of two-parter in Teen Titans when uh, he showed up, which I'm like, wow, they're bringing Professor Pig in? That's something. And look, it's Dr. Hurt. Yep, it's Dr. Simon Hurt. Great to see this guy, one of my favorite villains. Uh, not very known villain. He's not essentially a Grant Morrison villain. He's an old Silver Age villain that apparently that he just that Grant Morrison just dusted off made him an interesting villain. Which Grant, for basically, if you look at all Grant Morrison's work, he's essentially put the main villain of, of Grant Morrison's entire work for Batman from, I think it was like 2000, well, for roughly about five years, for five or six years at the most. Uh, the storyline is great, and plus there's even a scare in here about uh, basically the facer being pregnant. Turns out she wasn't pregnant, pregnant at all, and it seemed like she didn't get proper introduction to Damien. Just, oh, it's it, it just seemed like... Maybe Tim Seeley missed off the ideas, like, have dig like, hey, hey, Sean, this is my brother, Damien. He's like, nice to meet you, Damien. And they bring up the fact he's 13, which is basically how old he's supposed to be right now. But, yeah, great story. 
I'm gonna give this a 9.5 out of 10. This story is this is just really really good. Got great artwork too. All right, next up is uh, Deathstroke Volume Two, God Killer. This is actually issues from the previous volume for the series. This collect issue seven through ten of Deathstroke Volume Three and the annual first annual for the series since the first volume for the series of Deathstroke, uh, written by Tony S. Daniel and James Mooney. Yeah, I kind of forgot James Mooney took over, came in as the co-writer for these issues, and I also kind of forgot that Tony S. Daniel. I thought he just did the covers. He actually did the interiors as well. Yeah, he does the artwork for this thing, along with um, Tyler Kirkham, Edward Perlisa, and Peter Nuggan. Now, basically, I point, kind of pointed, but, but I came with this theory that this takes place between uh, the first and second arc of Murray the Fantasy's run for um, Wonder Woman because she's still wearing this outfit here. Uh, despite the fact at this point when this when the story was coming out, this was roughly two years ago, uh, she was wearing the David Finch costume. Which is a full body armor suit, which she was, which she actually, even after she stopped wearing the costume, she kept still kept the gauntlets basically, though she's got different uh, bracelets now and she's got different attire, but she still got the last of truth. Yep. Uh, Deathstroke is sent by Hibiscus, who is actually ordered by Apollo basically because Apollo got killed off during, at the end of um, Brian S. Rose with Wonder Woman. Uh, basically, take on this god and basically create this god killer sword, which only appears in this very story. Because after the story, the sword never appears again. Um, plus, also, Wonder Woman, of course, shows up, um, obviously. And Superman shows up toward the end in basically the most Superman way possible. Of course, this was the period of time when they uh, had Superman and Wonder Woman dating. Yeah, then look at this. Okay, Wonder Woman gets knocked away. And then, boom, here comes Superman. Yeah, this is the most, this is the, one of the best introductions for Superman in a, in a DC comic book post-Flashpoint. Yeah, this was an awesome... Way it's like, okay, here's here's running, running, and like, he's like, and he turns like, now what? Bam! <laughs> it's one of the most hilarious ones I have ever seen, but it's awesome. But uh, yeah, Tony S. Neal does a really good job writing him in here as well, though he had drawn him, which he, had, which he has experience drawing him because he drew him in the Superman Wonder Woman series when he was the artist for that. He was the original artist for that series. Uh, he was one of, uh, during. Uh, period, it was during Charles Schultz run for that series. When Schultz did the first 12 issues, Tony S. Day was one of two artists, basically, who did that run. When Period Tomasi took over the book, he had done Finky do the whole run, basically, right after that. Um, but yeah, this was a really awesome storyline. I know it's been like a year since I reviewed a trade from this volume, but... Excuse me. Yeah, I was very happy to get this thing. Uh, I kind of forgot that James Booney... Now, I thought James Booney took over an issue... Uh, 11. Turns out he took over was basically with issue 6. Basically came out as a co-writer. Um, and, and one of his credits on here is Savage Talk, which probably was the last series he did with Tony S. Daniel. And probably the last series overall. I, of course, the most recent thing I've seen of him writing-wise was when he did a two-part in Superman when, he, when Superman took on Deathstroke. Now, that made more sense to have Kay Perkins write the two-part Sinestro tie-in. Yeah. But, yeah. This was... Really good. Great artwork. And here's the Fistius and the first parents of the God Killer sword. Yeah, this awesome looking sword that only appears in this story. Because after this, he loses he, 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 yeah, he doesn't use the sword again. Also, he loses his eye. Yep, he takes out his eyeball. Though, the reason why he does is because they require a sacrifice. So they're just like, okay, I'll sacrifice my eye that basically I'm missing for years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's that. Uh, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. This book is just really good. Tony S. Daniel and James Booney do a great job of this. Um, I still got two more trades left to get for this particular run uh, in trade. Overall, I think it's um, a trades release for Deathstroke to collect the Deathstroke series. Uh, I'm not getting the original printing of uh, that the first trade that collect issues from the first line. Uh, let's see. You got three... Five. I think there's about six more trades left, but I've got most. But I, I got a good chunk of these trades so far. I've only got five trades so far, so I got like six more to go. But I hope I'm hoping to get more in the future. Okay. So that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode, which is going to be focusing on two Batman books. And it'll be episode 506, and it'll be episode 506 and uh, 417. Okay. But until then.
I will see you all next episode. Bye.